this chapter we'll look at the effects section and a few other tips and tricks. Let's start with the effects routing panel. This panel has a control head for each of the six different types of effects. Now you can't add or delete any items from this panel, but if you don't want an effect, just turn it off. If you want to use effects processing from your host DAW, then you can simply opt to turn off all of the effects and save some CPU power. To change the order of the effects, click and drag the handle area opposite the power switch. The order of the effects has a big impact on the overall sound. Any guitarist can tell you about that because of the time and effort that they put into laying out and connecting the pedal board, and this rack is essentially the same idea. If you place the modulation effect upstream of the reverb, it sounds like a chorus in a church. But if you put the reverb upstream of the modulation, it sounds like a church in a chorus pedal. It's interesting to scroll through the factory sound banks and watch how the cakewalk designers chose to arrange the effects in different patches. And again, remember that if you find a setup you really like, open the program menu, select copy, and then paste special to put it into another program. And as we go through these effects, keep in mind that most of them can have their parameters assigned with the MIDI learn function, and a lot of them can be assigned as destinations in the modulation matrix. The distortion unit is the most non-traditional of the effects. And because Zeta is a wavetable synth, this distortion unit works by distorting the wave shape. So most of its output has a decidedly digital sound. But the heavy metal mode works fairly well on the filters to simulate a guitar type distortion. And the decimator control is another bit crusher. So it has a unique sound, but it's good for lo fi effects. Next is the compressor. And this isn't the kind of compressor that you would try to use for mastering a song. This is a compressor that's just used to add punch to a specific sound. When an incoming signal gets to a certain volume, called the threshold, the compressor begins to turn it down. Now, how much it turns it down is the ratio, and the level that it's going to turn it down to is determined by the gain. If you set a compressor to the ratio of 1 to infinity, it becomes a limiter. The mode control determines how fast the compressor reacts. So if you set it to a fairly slow or medium setting, some of the sound, the loud initial part of the sound, will slip through before the compressor kicks in. This is how it adds punch to a drum sound or bass sound. It lets the initial attack pass at full volume, then clamps down on the rest, which has the effect of punching up the downbeat. The reverb section is really straightforward. You pick out the kind of sonic space you want to emulate with the mode control, Use the size control to set the reflections or ambience, and the damp control to filter out high frequencies for more realistic simulation. There are controls for high and low EQ, and a level control, which is the same as a wet-dry balance. The most common mistake with reverb is too much reverb, so approach with caution. The equalizer is really like two effects in one. First is a very basic 7-band graphic equalizer that you can configure with the mode control. And you can set each of these bands as a destination in the modulation matrix. Simulator mode is almost an effect of its own. It works independently of the 7-band EQ, and it creates a wide range of amplifier cabinet simulations that would be too complex to set up manually. The modulation device lets you choose from three families of modulation, chorus, flanger, and phaser. All of these make your sound bigger, but they do it in slightly different ways. A chorus unit changes the tuning. A phaser changes the playback timing and a flanger changes the playback speed. In fact, the term flanging goes back to the 1950s when engineers first discovered they could create this effect by lightly dragging a fingertip on the flange of a tape reel during recording, and the name stuck. The sync control lets you set the wobble speed of the modulation so that it lines up with the beat or tempo in the host program. And the EQ mode sets the values for the low and high EQ faders. If you want to see a list of all those values, check out page 52 of the user guide. The wave setting controls the shape of the modulation pulse. 
a sine wave will produce a more gentle rolling effect, and a triangle wave will generate a more pulsing effect. The four knobs at the bottom are where you really play with the overall sound by adjusting the rate and feedback of the effect. These can all be assigned to a MIDI controller and are all available in the mod matrix. Last but not least, we have the Humble Delay Unit, or Echo. Well, actually, there are three Humble Delay Units. And each one is stereo, so there are really six delay lines. Okay, so maybe it's not that humble. The timing values of the left and right stereo channels for each unit can be set independently for very cool ping pong effects. Each unit can be synced with the master tempo at different values, which is really effective for creating rhythm multiplier effects. And the EQ channels can be mapped to the modulation matrix. This gives you the ability to make each echo's brightness kind of pulse with the beat. One last cool feature. If you're using Zeta in standalone mode and you begin to get a great idea, you can click this. The dialog box will open. Give your great idea a name. And as soon as you hit save, it starts recording. And now the area at the top that used to say record wave file changes to stop recording. This is a handy little scratch pad and once the file is complete you can drag it right into a program like Sonar and keep on rolling. Speaking of rolling, it's time for me to roll. I hope you've picked up a few things, maybe found some hidden features in this very cool little synth. For everyone here at Streamworks Audio and Combined Minds Media, I'm Walt Honeycutt. Thanks for watching. <laughs>